Thank you, Larry. I am so happy to be back. I think this is the fourth time I have spoken at the Manhattan Rotary in the last seven years. And uh, let me say that I am a Paul Harris Fellow, but I forgot to bring my pen today. But I'm very uh, honored that I did get that honor back as a congressman in 1988, the people in my district, seeing that I was trying to change things, thought that I represented the spirit of the Rotary in the way I approached Main Street, trying to help the people. Shirley and I just came back from Kosovo. I'd say it was in the summer, July, and she wrote an excellent report on what's going on there. But since the time you, we spoke, we now have a new state. Not easy to create a new state. I started that in 1985. And Shirley, when we met in 1993, she's a former publisher, we got together and we made this a cause celeb as volunteers. And we started, just like Truth in Government, the Albanian American Foundation and the Albanian American Civic League. The proof is in the pudding. It's the first new state in 18 years. It's called Kosovo. That happened on February 17th. Unfortunately, Russia and Serbia are playing games and they're preventing it from being recognized in the United Nations. So they're trying to marginalize the state. And as you know, if you can't have an economy, you are independent in name only. And without membership in the United Nations, money from the World Bank, so you can rebuild the infrastructure, create the elect electricity you need so people will invest in factories to create the jobs, you really can't have a good state. So we're working on that. But if any of you have an interest in that, Shirley's here, she'll give you her card, you give her your card, and she'll send you the report she wrote, Kosovo Adrift. I also wrote a report on what's going on in general with the Albanian people. If you like that, we can send that to you too. Shirley Cloyes. Thank you for coming, Shirley. Now, to get something else out of the way, uh, yes, that is my daughter, Kara, who was named the fourth judge on American Idol. But don't ask me for tickets. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> a lot of people, now I'm gonna be known as Kara's dad, no longer as former Congressman Jody Aguardi. She is a songwriter. Now, where do we stand today? You have this booklet. Open it up to the middle folder. And you'll see the article I am most proud of. It's the article that I wrote entitled, Cooking the Nation's Books. And let me tell you what I said in here. Not only are the books of the United States worse than Enron's, they are an illegal set of books. Now you might say, how could they be illegal? This is the US government. It is illegal. But you haven't forced your Congress to implement a law that was passed in 1951 for the first time and 1955 for the second time. The first Hoover Commission, signed by Truman, mandated the accrual basis of accounting, the one that the SEC imposes on publicly traded companies. So you are not defrauded as a shareholder. It didn't happen. They had a second Hoover Commission, 1955. Read it. The public law is cited. And Eisenhower signed it and gave the Congress five years to implement the right accounting system called the accrual basis, generally accepted accounting principles. They still haven't done it. Now, doesn't that get you mad? It should. Because what I'm about to tell you, you think the problems are on Wall Street? All right, let's go to the numbers. The national debt of the United States of America as publicized before the bailout was $9.3 trillion. That's with a T. With the bailout, as you know, 700, and guess what? They added another 120, 150 of sweeteners called earmarks, the pork, because some members had to be incented to vote for the bill. Now, isn't that crazy? At a time when America is bleeding, somebody had the nerve to add pork, that is somebody that either is delusional or has a very, very safe seat. One or the other. Because to me, it's incredible that anybody in these times would add anything to that amount, which by the way, has to be borrowed. We don't have that money. It's probably gonna be borrowed from the Chinese. And if not the Chinese, it's probably gonna be printed. And if it's printed, what happens? Ask Larry Parks. Inflation, okay? So we have a, a, a lot of problems going on. But in any case, the real debt right now on a cash basis is 10 point something trillion.
But that's not the real problem. The real problem is that since we're not on the accrual basis and we're on the cash basis, and let me give you accounting 101. The cash basis is the system you use to balance your checkbook. When you write a check, you say, I have an expense. I can deduct it for tax purposes. The accrual basis says it's not necessary for you to write a check to have an expense. If you are obligated to pay something and that liability is fixed and determinable, that has to be put on your books now, even though you didn't spend the money. And on the other hand, if you have a right to receive something, an account receivable, even though you didn't get the cash, that's income. That's the way corporate America keeps its books. And that's the way the US government should be keeping its books. Why? Because that's the system that government imposes on you. Why the double standard? If the Securities and Exchange Commission imposes that system, and it had the Sarbanes-Oxley law to really put teeth in it, on corporations to protect shareholders, why are we using the same system to protect taxpayers? Now, let me give you the really bad news. The really bad news is that if you add up the liabilities for many things, student loans, you name it. Mortgages, of course, and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. What about Medicare? What about Social Security? Just for Medicare and Social Security and military pensions, the unfunded, unfunded means we don't have the cash, but worse than that, unrecorded, we haven't put it on the books as a liability, is $53 trillion. That's with a T. Now, if you don't believe me, go get the issue of the Times three weeks ago. Pete Peterson, billionaire, started a foundation, the Pete Peterson Foundation. He hired away the most important person we had in the government, a former partner of mine, David Walker. He was the Controller General. He had another five years to go on his term. You can imagine what he got paid. He left. He's with Pete Peterson to do exactly what I'm here telling you. That's what they got to do. They took a two-page ad out in Section A of the Times, both sides, and the first thing they said was that, that our Medicare and Social Security unfunded, they didn't say unrecorded, they should have said that too, because nobody knows it, is 53 trillion. That's a big, big number, and that's not all of it. Because if you look at government-sponsored enterprises, you've heard that name, GSE, why did you hear that name? Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. That's only two of them, there were 29 of them. The Farm Credit System, the Resolution Trust Corporation, remember the SNL crisis? Uh, another big one, the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. When a company goes out of business, they then lay off their pension obligations on the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, and I can tell you right now, if there was an audit, there's not enough money to cover the liabilities they've picked up, even though they, they have an insurance program. Entities, they were called SPEs, Special Purpose Entities. Well, we have them in the federal government. They're called GSEs, Government Sponsored Enterprises. And guess what they called them in New York State? Because New York State has a problem just as bad. Authorities, 600 of them off the books with pensions. Why do you think Schwarzenegger now is, is crying uncle like the banks? Do you think he just ran out of money? No, what's happening is revenues are going down and they haven't funded the pensions, and he has to pay these pensions. Every one of these states are hiding their real pension obligation, just like the federal government. And now we have to worry about these municipal bonds to see if they're gonna become subprime, because this stuff is not on the books. And in New York State, take the MTA, the biggest authority of all. Maybe not, you have the power authority too, I forget which is bigger. Would you believe the deficit of the MTA does not get put on the books of Albany. So Patterson and the group doesn't really look at that. They have to, in effect, float bonds. But what does that tell you? That tells you that they're adding to the debt just like a GSC would. What happens when the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation says, we're out of money, we need money? They float a bond. Full faith and credit of the United States of America, just like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And I remember people telling me when I wrote the book, they were saying to me, and look at page 47, when I said, this is not just an implicit guarantee. People are buying these bonds because they think if something happens, the United States is gonna be behind them. Ah, oh, Joe, that'll never happen. There's gonna be mortgages, collateral. Here it is, it's happened, okay? 